context and perhaps most distinctive lichens in the Wanstead area, in fact, um, in the whole of the UK really. This is Xanthori, Xanthoria paratina, and um, it's quite important to get an idea of perspective. So this is quite a close-up photograph. The branch itself is probably about half an inch wide and you can see these orange round things here. These are called apothecia and these are a couple of millimeters across. So we're zooming in quite close. Now the good thing about Xanthoria paratina is it's bright. It's a sort of golden yellow color which is quite distinctive. It has these lobes at the side here um, and it also has these Apothecia. I'm going to talk a little bit more about these later on, but these are the um, sexual reproductive areas of the fungus itself and only the fungus. Um, and it's got a thin margin to the apothecia. So it's relatively easy to see because it's quite bright. However, This was on the bottom of a log that I found near Centre Cops after it had been raining quite heavily. And this is uh, wet Xanthoria paratina. Um, and if you're looking for Xanthoria paratina at the moment, uh, I suggest that some of it at least might to be quite green. When I saw this originally, I thought, what on earth is this? But then I saw these lobes and I saw these thin margined apothecia and I suddenly realized that if I dried it out, it would go orange. So, um, that's a warning that uh, not everything stays the same in the lichen world. So what is a lichen? What am I talking about? Uh, the simplest way of uh, thinking about it really is that a lichen is the association between a fungus and either a cyanobacterium or a green algae. The fungus is known as the mycobiont and it forms the shape of the lichen, the form of the lichen, and it's the basis for the naming of the species. So if you're naming a species of lichen, basically you're naming it on um, naming the fungus. The algae or cyanobacteria are known as photobionts, which gives you a clue as to their main function, which is to provide sugars from photosynthesis. So this is a, an association which is arguably of mutual benefit, you could argue it's a classic symbiotic relationship whereby the uh, photobionts provide sugars, uh, the algae would be providing sugar alcohols, cyanobacteria would be providing glucose, and possibly the cyanobacteria might actually be fixing nitrogen. So they're contributing this to the, um, the fungus. The fungus itself is providing the habitat really for these photobionts. Uh, it's providing the structure, it's protecting um, the photobionts from drying out, it's providing them with a place to get to the sun uh, without um, being too exposed. And the, you can argue about whether this is a symbiotic relationship or it is the fungus actually um, uh, adopting these um, photobionts. The problem is that it's now known that other organisms such as yeast and bacteria may also be involved in the lichen structure. So it's now perhaps better to think of um, this, uh, the lichen as an ecosystem. Maybe you could regard it as a fungal ecosystem. Now, lichens have been around for a really long time. Um, remarkably, there's evidence from fossils of lichen uh, forms in the Devonian period, that's 400 million or so years ago. And this was a time where most of the uh, life on the planet was in the seas. And so lichens may, uh, con I could conjecture, and it's only a conjecture, that lichens may, be in, may have been important in the emergence of plants from the sea onto the land. Uh, because soon after the Devonian period, you have um, a sort of uh, huge uh, increase in the number of plants on land, uh, Carboniferous period and so on. So where do you find lichens? Well, nearly everywhere really. Um, they're estimated to cover about 6% of the land from hot deserts to Arctic tundra. Um, in Wanstead, um, we don't have either of those uh, habitats, but we do have pavements and they're found, uh, lichens are found on the pavements beneath your feet. They're the sort of chewing gum marks um, 
that you might be annoyed by. They're found on rocks, they're found on trees, branches, and they're also found on the soil. And I'm going to talk a little bit about soil lichens uh, later on because they've become a particular interest of mine. So as an introduction to lichens, um, the first thing you do really is have a look at the lichen, examine it. You have to get in quite close to get the detail, but then you'll realize that lichens have various forms and these forms of course have a particular language. So I'm gonna go through the forms using common lichens that are found in our locality and describe those. Um, so, this is probably the least organized of the um, lichens. Uh, there are filamentous lichens, but I've not found any of those. This is lepros or powdery. And you can see this is Silolechia lucida, which is found on the vertical faces of rocks. This is on some granite in St. Mary's churchyard. And you can see it's got a, a, a sort of powdery, um, it's actually a sulfurous yellow. Um, powdery green and you can sometimes see some crusts here. So it's relatively um, straightforward and it forms patches. This is, well, initially I thought this was Lepraria incarna when I saw it and took a photograph. Unfortunately, the photograph makes it look a bit yellowy. Um, this is a powdery type of lichen that is found uh, on rough bark trees. This is in fact uh, an oak in uh, bush wood. And usually Lepraria incarna is a sort of bluey green colour. And I think I thought at the time it was bluey green, but this has come out a bit yellowy. So if you imagine this as bluey green, this would be Lepraria incarna. The next step up really are crustose lichens and crustose, as you might imagine, just means that the lichen is forming a sort of crust over the substrate. Um, this is Lecanora muralis, which is the common uh, chewing gum lichen. This is actually on tarmac in Windsor Road. Um, the Lecanora group of lichens is quite a large group and they're quite difficult to identify. Uh, this one is uh, the only one of the Lecanora group that has lobate margins, these sort of lo um, lobes that are sticking out. And the um, thing that like, uh, Lecanora have in common are these apothecia. In fact, the, this form of apothecia is named after Lecanora and it's called a Lecanorine apothecia. So that means that it has a sort of crust, it's almost looks like a jam tart uh, or maybe a chocolate tart. Um, the outside is made up of both the fungus and the algae so it's a thaline margin and it's very similar to the actual thallus of the lichen itself and inside here the um, orangey brown area is where the acai are, the ascospores, um, and this is uh, an indication that this lichen is fertile and it's undergoing uh, sexual reproduction. The spores will be released. The thing to remember is that these spores are only going to be fungus. And so when the spores land in the right environment, they may grow, but to become a lichen, they've still got to find a photobiont and the right photobiont. This is uh, Lecanora albescens, and uh, this is on a concrete post in my garden, in fact. Again, it's got these apothecia again with the uh, thaline margin, a margin very similar to the, um, uh, the main thallus of the uh, lichen itself. You also get crustose lichens on trees. Um, this one is Lecanora claratera, the one in the center here. Uh, again, you can see these Lecanorine apothecia, um, slightly different color. They're slightly frosty here. This is, um, the term is prunos, and they're covered in a dusting of crystals. Um, and uh, the thing um, to remember when you look at lichens is you often get a whole bunch of them grouped up together. So we have uh, Lecanora claritera here. We have Xanthoria paratina again either side and we have some spiky um, uh, folios lichens here which are physia these two uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about those later on. Now there's another form of apothecia and so you can divide 
the type of apothecia in lichens up into two. This is lecanarine and this is lecidine. So they don't have a saline crust. They look just like warts. They, uh, the color can be black, it can be various colors, but they don't uh, have the same color as the, the thallus itself. Um, this is Lecidella eleochroma, and it's quite variable. Um, the, uh, can the uh, apothecia can be brown, uh, dark, black, and so on, and they can be concentrated or they can be scattered. So this is um, quite a variable um, lichen, but it's a crustose lichen. It's firmly attached to the substratum. It's very difficult to get it off without, without taking the substratum with you. On to folios or leaf-like lichens. Now, um, this is one of my favorites really of the folios type. It's, it's called Flavo Palmelia caparata. And this is on a low hanging branch in bushwood. It has apple green lobes. You can see quite broad lobes. Again, this is probably three inches across perhaps. So it's not, we're not in quite so close. Um, the lobes themselves are sort of matte and um, they slightly wrinkly, but on the inside here, you can see, um, not perhaps close enough, but you can see a powdery sort of deposits here. And these are the ceridia. And ceridia are one of the ways in which uh, lichens uh, reproduce, but it's an asexual form of reproduction. And basically there are little bundles of uh, fungus plus the algae, uh, and they are uh, easy to be picked up. So if a bird lands on here, it could pick it up on its feet. If a snail crawls across, it could pick it up or a mite. Um, and so these are sort of, they could even be sort of scattered around in high winds, I guess. And this is an advantage because the fungus and the algae are together, or the photobiont, fungus and the photobiont are together. And so when it lands, it can immediately start forming another lichen. Um, the point about um, folios lichens is that they are leaf like but you might not associate that with leaves but the point is that they are dorsiventrally um, they are dorsiventral so that the upper side the upper cortex is different from the lower cortex uh, and this is more obvious here where you have these slightly crinkly um, leaf like objects um, the upper side is uh, sort of uh, a matte sort of green again, but it has these sort of whitish patches across here. And these are called pseudocyphelae. And all that means is that there's a thinning out of the sort of upper cortex. Um, so they're showing through and it ends up with the, the leaf having slightly uh, concave surface in patches. The upper surface is green, the lower surface is dark brown to black, and you can just about see that here. And in the lower margin there, you can just see some brownish edges. Um, so this is Parmelia sulcata. It has ceridia as well on the edges here. You can just see these powdery sort of deposits. And these, again, are uh, fungus plus photobiont, and these will flake off and you can start forming another lichen again. So um, neither of these are particularly common, but they're worth looking out for as uh, folios lichens and they are in our area. One of the most common um, lichens that you'll see on most branches on most trees really um, are the Physia. And there are two uh, very common ones. The first is called Physia adsendens and um, you have to get in close. Um, you, you won't be able to get this sort of view without getting really close. The lobes here are a few millimeters across, so you'll need a lens, uh, but go in and have a look and you'll see that the lobes are sort of hooded. They've got a sort of helmet shape, um, which is the first clue. And the second clue that it's a physia are these cilia. You can see these little spiky things with are at the end of the lobes. So characteristic of physia is that they have these cilia. The um, way in which you distinguish adsendens 
uh, from others is by this hooded appearance. And this is Physia tenella. Again, you can see these cilia at the edge of the lobes here, but the lobes are more spread out, a little bit like a hand, I suppose. Um, and again, at the end of the lobes, you get ceridia in um, Physia tenella far more than you do with adsendens. Um, they're both very common. Uh, they both associate with the Xanthoria paratenia, the orange lichen you saw at the beginning. And um, if you go to uh, Longwood, and if you know the area of the enclosure, there's uh, a hawthorn there. And it's absolutely covered. 90% of the surface of this hawthorn at the uh, lower margins anyway is covered in uh, both of these Physia and Xanthoria. Uh, it's quite remarkable. The other classification um, that's used for lichens is fruticose or shrubby. Um, this doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean they look like a shrub, but it does mean that they're radially symmetrical. Um, so this is Cladonia rangiformis, and it's one of the false reindeer lichens. Um, I need to explain that a little bit. Uh, if you go to Norway, you'll find that uh, the tundra is covered in these, uh, this type of uh, highly branched um, lichens. Um, and they are um, food for reindeer. Uh, the Latin for reindeer, I think, is rangifera. And um, the reindeer feed on Cladonia rangifera. This is rangiformis, um, so it's another form of Cladonia. We don't have reindeers in Wunstead, as far as I'm aware. But uh, this was in the old sewage works, and it formed a, a tight ball of highly branched, and these are, they look like stems, but they're called padisha. And they, uh, they're highly branched at about 60, over 60 degrees. And the way you can tell this form of uh, reindeer type lichen from others is that if you look really closely you can see a sort of patterning here it looks a little bit like a giraffe I don't know whether you can see that I hope you can and this is areas where the um, the algae are, are showing through so the padisha are generally white and overall this looked completely white um, but if you look more closely you can see that the uh, photobiont is poking through here um, in fact, the photobiont is Trabuxia, which is a green algae, uh, alga. Um, so uh, highly branched, and you find clumps of these um, in areas where Tericus lichens grow. Um, and they start off from uh, this sort of uh, situation. Now, this really, uh, I don't think you could describe this as shrubby unless you're very small, um, but it's uh, it is, these Padisha are radially symmetrical and they will grow out. This is quite a young one. It's Cladonia conia crea. And it has, um, rather than leaves, it has squamules. Um, they're um, like scales, really. And you can see some tiny ones on the Padisha here. Um, and the Padisha grow out of these scramules. So when this starts, it grows from scramules. The scramules actually disappear and it just starts branching. Um, this one uh, remains with its scramules. The Padisha come up, um, they're covered in tiny little scramules here, and they're often pointed or blunt ended with tiny cups. Um, and I'll show you another type of lichen in a second. Um, so those are the broad forms or types of lichen that you can find about the place um, as a sort of introduction. Now, I have become interested recently in terichorous lichens. Um, that means lichens that grow on the ground or on the soil. And um, I first came across these a few years ago when I started um, thinking about lichens. Um, and uh, I've, I was walking along the Ditch of Despair and uh, uh, local people will know that the Ditch of Despair is a ditch that was uh, dug from the football pitches near Alex through to drain into Alex when they got waterlogged. And I found out uh, only today, Tim told me that uh, one of the groundsmen had dug this uh, without permission, just out of disgust because his pitches were getting waterlogged. 
but the bitches, they, the, <laughs> the ditches are quite steep sided and um, towards the Alex end, I noticed that uh, there were plenty of um, Cladonia. Now this is a classic pixie cup here, and you can see some of these branched Padisha here that are starting to form. And on the one side of the ditch, there were clumps of these pixie cup Cladonia, and on the other side of the ditch, there were the reindeer type lichens. And um, this was the first uh, intimation I got at the time that we had uh, Tericorus lichens in the Wanstead area. So I was quite pleased about that. Um, in 2018, Rose Stevens, uh, who roams the flats um, looking very closely at things, uh, discovered um, a, what's called a dog tooth lichen. And I'll come into the reason for that a bit later on. Um, this is Peltigera. And um, this was a patch uh, about maybe a square foot or so that was found right on the shores of Alex underneath a birch. And it was very difficult to find. Um, it had been a little bit disturbed, possibly being pecked at by ducks and geese. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but this turns out to be um, Peltigera hymenina. Um, it's sort of got quite crinkly edges, it's dark matte um, uh, uh, leaves, sorry, not leaves, dark matte thallus, sorry. Um, and it has these uh, orange brown apothecia. They're longer than they are wide and they poke up. And um, when I found this, I thought this is very interesting. So I wrote to the um, county recorder or the recorder for London and Essex, John Skinner, and I said, we've got some Peltigera, and he agreed that it was Peltigera hymenina. And um, he said um, there was only a, one other patch of Peltigera that he knew in the London area. So um, I thought, oh, gosh, that's interesting. Um, and then, of course, in 2019, um, Alex became um, flooded, and this whole area was submerged. So I thought, well, oh, that's the last of our Peltigera. But um, early this year, I was wandering through the old sewage works and I decided to see if I could find some orchid rosettes um, in an area which, where we've had um, many years, well, a few years ago now, uh, some bee orchids. And uh, I was wandering around the area, which is uh, sort of northwest of the paddock gate, if you know the area and discovered um, another patch of Peltigera. Um, not this photo, but this was also um, Peltigera hymenina. So I thought, great, we've got our Peltigera back. Um, but at the same time, there were two large bunches of the, uh, the reindeer lichen, the highly branched Pradesha. And there were two different sorts. The one I've shown you already is reindeiformis. The other one I think is uh, Cladonia furcata but um, diagnosing that is waiting on some chemical tests, which I haven't done yet. Um, so this was quite exciting. Um, and I looked around the area and I couldn't find very much else. And when I broadened my horizons, I couldn't see anything else in the old sewage works. But when I came back, I found some of these pixie cup type lichens in a little area. And I took this photograph and this is Cladonia humilis. Um, Cladonia can be very difficult to um, specify, uh, but this has got a very short uh, Padisha leading up to a very wide uh, rim. And so uh, I've, I've, I've had this confirmed as uh, Cladonia humilis, and you can see some of the squamules here. And I was very happy with this find. And then early autumn, I showed this picture in discussion on a Zoom uh, lichen group and one of the experts said to me oh um, this looks like Peltigera necari another species of Peltigera um, and I was a bit miffed that I hadn't realized myself um, and so I went back to have a look and see if I could find it and confirm his um, theory 
and uh, the area had been disturbed during the summer, I think probably horses hooves and so on, but I did manage to get some photos which confirmed that we had small patches, not as big as the Hymenina patches of uh, this uh, one or two, I think, patches of uh, Peltigera necari. So this increased our Peltigera score to two, which um, I was quite pleased about. And then this year we've um, we've gone up in the world as far as Peltigera numbers are concerned. So uh, this autumn, Rose Stevens took a photograph uh, when she was exploring the ditch near uh, Angel. And she found um, this sort of uh, Peltigera. Now this is uh, easy to recognize because it's one of the few Peltigeras that have Ceridia on their surface. And they only have these Ceridia when they're young. Now, again, to give you an idea of scale, these are probably a maximum of about half an inch wide. And this was a lovely clump of uh, young Peltidra didactyla. And it was on the vertical face of the ditch that drains into Angel, and it was facing west. So it can only have got direct sunlight from about 3.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it was tucked away, uh, very difficult to see as well. Um, so full marks to Rose for picking it up. Since then, um, we found uh, some mature uh, Peltigera didactyla on the shores of Alex. And again, they seem to be uh, attached to vertical faces um, and they seem to point away from the sun. Uh, two of them are actually facing north. So, um, quite how this uh, gets enough light to photosynthesize and exist, I don't know. Um, the other thing, uh, the next uh, Peltigera that I came across was a bit of a puzzle. Um, and it's just north of Alex. And uh, I wasn't at all sure what it was. I showed it some people and they weren't sure. Uh, so I went back and had a look and I found a patch that had been roughed up. Again, it's a uh, problem with terichorous like, lichens is that they do get disturbed. Um, dogs, foxes, people. Um, and there was a, this uh, patch that had been roughed up. And you can see that it's got loads of these rhizomes. So the top half is green, uh, it's a matte green again, um, as most Peltigeras are. But the underside is covered in these it, it's beardy sort of rhizemes, and they're very compli complex rhizemes. And um, this, uh, I suddenly realized, was Peltigera canina. And now we can connect up the common name, I think, uh, as to why Peltigera are called dock tooth lichens. Because if you've got a good imagination, I guess you could imagine that some of these uh, rhizemes look like dog's teeth. Well, that's my theory uh, and I'm sticking to it. So this was uh, Peltigera canina. So we've now got four different um, Peltigeras in our small area. And this must be um, by far the uh, most interesting area for terichorous terichorous lichens in London. Um, and uh, in order to try and understand why they are where they are, I've tried to map um, these lichens. And um, this is fairly crude, but uh, the C stands for Cladonia. And I haven't talked very much about those, but um, there are patches of Cladonia just north of um, what was called cat and dog, but I think we now have to call Nick's Trench. Um, there are a few little patches in the SSSI, but of course this area has been burned over, so it's not surprising there aren't very many patches of Cladonia here. These patches are mostly Cladonia rangiformis or a similar um, type of reindeer lichen, reindeer-like lichen. Uh, another couple of pa uh, there's a patch here which was destroyed by the fire but there's still remnants and then there's a few patches here there's a very interesting patch um just of cladonia 
Uh, these are the pixie cat ones with Coney of Crea as well. Uh, I haven't um, decided what species they are, but there's a whole patch attached to the bank uh, to the southwest of Centre Cops. Uh, well worth a look, actually. Uh, and then down by Angel, there are two or three patches of Peltigera and many uh, patches of Cladonia, mostly, again, the reindeer-type lichens. So uh, this is the good area. And then over on Alex again, we have the ditch with plenty of Cladonia in, which I need to go and uh, try and sort out what they are. Uh, two patches of Peltigera hymenina and two patches of the Peltigera didactyla. The other thing I've noticed, there are some, uh, the starting to grow some more reindeer lichen here. So the flat's covered in um, terriculus lichens, which I think is quite exciting, but there we are. Um, I haven't found much in the park, except there's a, a bomb crater, I think, uh, there's a sort of dent anyway in the park uh, near the sequoia that was planted in memory of um, Winston Churchill. And there's a small patch of Cladonia there. And then, of course, there's this uh, singular patch in the old sewage works. The thing that most of these patches have in common is they tend to be, Cladonia tends to be associated with ditches, and so does Peltigera. But some of them will grow on open ground next to paths, um, and maybe they benefit from the disturbance that goes on and the nutrients that are thrown up. So, once did lichen so far. Um, so far, I reckon I have identified in inverted commas at the macro level, I just with a hand lens and a, a few chemical tests, which I haven't talked about, about 70 species. Um, to really do them properly, you need to do microscopic examination, but I haven't gone down that uh, line yet. Um, the chemical tests, which I haven't talked about, uh, revolve around bleaches, um, caustic uh, potash, um, uh, um, potassium hydroxide, and um, uh, UV lights are quite useful as well. Um, to my mind, it's best to think of the ID of lichens as a hypothesis based on current evidence rather than a done deal, and I find this quite liberating. Um, I've seen 70 different species, I'm sure, but precisely what they are, um, I know for some of them, but I don't know, don't know for all of them, and I probably won't know uh, until I get down to microscopic examination for some of them, at least. Um, I think they're interesting. They're all over the place and they're worth looking at, but you need to look quite closely. There is quite good literature. Um, these are 12 to 15 pounds. Uh, there's one on church yard lichens, uh, and that's one place which I have, I started out looking uh, for lichens. There's one on lichens on trees, and there's one on coastal and seashore lichens. The Bible is an illustrated guide. Um, it's about, it's quite expensive, but these all have pictures and they're very useful to set you on your way. You can look at the form and then you can narrow it down and then you can try and identify precisely which lichen it is. Um, it's, it's not difficult if you take it uh, on at face value and try and sort out what's going on bit by bit. Um, if you want absolute precision and you want to know precisely which lichen is which, it can be quite uh, daunting. And finally, um, since I've told you about the forms of lichen, you'll be able to tell me that um, this is a, well, it's a folios lichen, I'm afraid. It's not a shrubby lichen. Um, it's uh, the upper side and the underside are different. So it's hazard cortex on an upper side and an underside. This is mostly underside, it's very pale. This is darker. Um, so the photobionts are mostly in this sort of area, this is the upper side. So this is a leaf-like or folios um, lichen. It's called Vernia prunastri and it's on a tree, um, <laughs> it's on the low branch of a tree as you walk through uh, from Belgrave Road up to um, uh, Leightonstone. Um, and it's uh, yeah, a rather nice specimen, I think. 
the one thing I have learned about lichens is that from a distance they may not look much but the closer you get and the closer you look at them the more amazing they become and uh, so I'll uh, leave you with that and uh, encourage you to look and if you find something and you want some advice I'll try and help if you can take pictures that's great uh, or you can tell me where it is and I'll try and uh, help you along the way to um, looking at and understanding lichens. Thank you very much.